Okay, let's start this. Thebes nowadays is called Luxor, was the capital of ancient Egypt around 3,000 years ago. It's believed that it was the largest city back then. It was also an important place to worship God Amun-Ra, and that's why they built and erected Karnak Temple here on the east bank of Luxor. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Here you are. So the entry ticket is 200 Egyptian pounds per person. Once again, we're going to use Christiana as a size comparison. Look at the size of this. This temple is just not to honor God Amun-Ra, but also other gods and Egyptian rulers who contributed with something of building this over the years. And I believe that more than 30 pharaohs contributed with something, so it's a lot. Karnak Temple is the second biggest temple in the world behind Angkor Wat, which we visited as well. So I'm very glad we are visiting all the grand things around the world. This is a place that would impress anyone around the world, even today. Even today. With time, the hieroglyphics have faded away or been damaged. And you can see a bit of plaster over there, but still, it's amazing to see how this is still preserved. There are 134 of these gigantic columns representing the papyrus flower. And you can also see some color on the ceiling there and a bit over here in this column and this one. And birds are making nests out of the little holes they find. Look at that one. There. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nature taking over. Literally. Now imagine 3,000 years ago how the hell were they building, constructing these huge structures? It just blows your mind. But how do we erect this? Unbelievable. Plus the amount of detail that goes into every single column here with hieroglyphics. We are walking through history once again. Here in Karnak Temple is a statue of Hat Sheep Sut, one of the most powerful female pharaohs in Egypt. And as you can see, her face is a bit disfigurated because when the Romans invaded Luxor or Egypt, they destroyed her face. She was ruling with her little son over there. As you can see, there's a little statue there. She was ruling with him. She was the most powerful female pharaoh that ruled Egypt. And at the beginning, when she started ruling, she would wear a beard because back then Egyptians didn't want women ruling Egypt. But once she got the power and she was enough powerful, she showed herself as a woman and everybody accepted her. Now they had no choice anyway, and she did a good job. She's one of the most famous pharaohs ever existed, like female pharaohs, her and Cleopatra. Look at 
Julia Patrick came much later than her. Yes, yeah, she, she came later on in the story. They consider her the first female pharaoh ever ruling. I think there was one or two before her, but anyway, they consider this one the first. Because she was very powerful. But the statue of her son is also uh, missing, like mm -hmm. he's half a body. Obviously the son was very little, so he could not make decisions. So someone had to make the decisions for him. She was taking his place until he was old enough to rule, to start ruling. Very interesting. The history here is very, very long. We're not going to be going deep into the history and all the details because otherwise we would not leave this temple ever. Because this is, we already mentioned, it's the second biggest temple in the world. So imagine all the details, all the histories, all the images, all the statues, there is a lot to cover. And if you ever come here and if you're interested in knowing a lot more of the history and going deep into it, we recommend hiring a guide because you get different insights. We read what we wanted online, so we came and we already know, well, they not, we already know what to look for more or less. And yeah, that's, that's it. There's a lot of signs throughout the Karnak Temple. So you can stop by, read a little bit about the history, mm -hmm. get a bit of uh, insight of what this was once. And what and yeah. to look for as well in different sections. So it's very well organized. My favorite part so far is the columns. Yeah, massive. It's massive and unbelievable and very well preserved, consider the time. 3,000 years ago, <laughs> so still standing today. I'm very, very impressed. There's a three kilometer avenue from Karnak Temple leading you to the Luxor Temple and you have Sphinx in both sides. It's now closed, they are restoring as most of these Sphinx were underground and they need to restore them. Mm, it's a big, big project yeah. that the Egyptian government is taking. So I'm hoping, it was supposed to be ready by now, 2021, but obviously with COVID and everything, has been delays. Yeah, there's been delays, but yeah, it looks But once looks that all is right. finished, you can walk either from the Luxor Temple to the Karnak or the other way around. Yeah, it's going to be, I think it's a pretty good walk and it was built in the ancient times. Mm -hmm. It's not a new thing, they're it's just restoring. Oh, you got it! Uh, where is it? Is that in your shirt? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. uh, and that's how you kill Egyptian fly. I don't know if I got it. I was looking <laughs> at you, I was not looking at the camera. Anyway. You shall suffer. Mm. Me. But yeah, after there will be a, a three kilometer avenue and you can see the Sphinx. So I think it would be very cool to walk. Yeah, pretty on. nice walk. Mm. It's three kilometers, but come on, who doesn't want to walk an ancient road? Let's go. Yep. There's a lot more to cover here and we haven't even covered half. We haven't even covered half of this. left just in time now the big two groups oh, are right, coming yes but they're all with a they're still coming guide and in a group that now is completely packed anyway it's not packed like it used to be before i'm sure of that but it's still a lot of people which is in a way it's nice to see because i mean you need you need tourism the economy needs tourism so in a way it's good and it's not like a a massive crowd you can still avoid the people and the place is massive so you still have space to walk around anyway <laughs> it's just like the entrance there's a lot of people right now because they just arrived look at all the buses oh yeah look so many buses now it's crazy yeah, as long as uh, most of the people are wearing masks anyway they were just taking the mask for the pictures and then putting them back on so i think if you are a responsible tourist why not travel in for a little bit, you know? And this is where the avenue ends. 
This is the entrance of Luxor Temple. Once this is finished, you can walk from Kanak Temple all the way to Luxor. Federal Avenue. It's three kilometers. Well, we did it not on the avenue, but on the main road here, and it was quite easy. So I think it's going to be a pretty nice walk. Yeah, you got the River Nile on that side. Yeah. It'll be a pretty nice walk. Yeah. And, and now, now it's time for lunch because we are very hungry. No, it's all right. Thank you. It's all right. Thank you. Thank you. It's all right. Thank you. This is constant here in Egypt, but you just need to take it lightly. They're just trying to make a living. Yeah, so especially now, anyone, so especially now really. with coronavirus, so business has gone down. And I don't really think, they're not harming anyone. They're just asking, they have a service, they want to provide a service, they're just asking. Sometimes they can be... A bit pushy? Know, a bit annoying, I would say. <laughs> yeah, annoying, yeah. That's very annoying. It's totally okay, I don't mind. But uh, they're not harming anyone, like I said. They are just trying to sell their business, trying to make a living. So we just say no. And that's it. Sometimes they wish us a good day. Sometimes they just say, okay, that's it. For lunch we chose some grilled chicken. I also ordered a kofta sandwich with some tahini sauce, some salad, Egyptian bread. How's the chicken? Really good. Not dry at all. It's really juicy and nice. And you get the flavor of like the crispiness of the ch charcoal. The skin is super crispy. Yes. A lot of uh, Egyptians do eat this for lunch. This is like a typical lunch for them. I know you can have this anywhere around the world. Like grilled chicken, but here, it tastes different. It does, because they have their own spiciness. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they do it their own way. The pasta is also very good. They have a little bit of um, influence from the Turkish because the Ottoman Empire were here once so they influenced a bit of their food Okay, shukran basha Thank you Well, that was much better than having a Nando's <laughs> and they're much more affordable That whole meal only costed us 60 Egyptian pounds Very good Alright, next video coming up, Luxor Temple. Stay tuned for that one. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We shall see you in the next one. Peace!